Welcome back to Empowering Small Business. I'm Dave Kaufman, your host for the next uh, 45 minutes. Today, I'm joined by a very special friend of mine, a mentor, a advisor of mine. His name is Ron Klein. His company's name is The Grandfather of Possibilities. He's an inventor, consultant, thought leader. Ron, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, David, for having me. I'm delighted. Absolutely. You know, about, uh, I think it was four or five years ago, our two worlds collided. And I can tell you that my life has never been the same since knowing you. You've been a mentor to me. You've been, you've spoken a lot of truth and, and advice into me. And so I want to thank you for that. Well, thank you. And thanks for being my friend. Uh, you're, you're a delight. Absolutely. Thank you. So, um, Ron, some of the, th I'm just reading here, some of the things that you have uh, contributed to society, uh, one of them stands out in particular. You're the guy that invented the magnetic strip on the back of the credit card. Is that true? That's true. And I guess it affected a couple of people. Yeah. One or two. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> Is it worn out? <laughs> yeah. You can tell she uses it a lot, but uh, no, not really. She's, she's very responsible with the, uh, with the credit card. But uh, wow, the magnetic strip on the credit card. Can you, can you tell our listeners how, how you invented it or why did you invent it? You know, Dave, it was probably one of the easiest and simplest challenges I've had in my entire career. And people, people shudder when they hear me say that because my whole philosophy is simplicity. I look at a, a challenge. First of all, I don't believe in problems. Problems can be frustration. So I turn every problem into a challenge and behind, behind that challenge is an opportunity and a gift. And that's the way I look at things. And I, I looked at the, the situation at the time where, and, and I simplify it. By simplifying it, I say that what's the given to the challenge? What's the solution we're looking for? And everything else in between is just the journey. It's the minutia. And, and there's little hurdles and detours along in that journey, but those you solve with stickability and flexibility. So back in the early 60s, very early 60s, a, a director of a very large department store came to me and said, we have a problem. People come in to make credit card purchases. And at that time, the credit card was just a, a little piece of plastic with your name embossed on it and the credit card number embossed. And the credit card companies would give to the merchants, every merchant that, that did charge purchases, they would give a, a very, very big book of all the negative account numbers that were produced by the uh, credit card companies. And along with that, the merchant had to go through that book every time somebody came through to make a purchase and see if your number was in there. If not, then you were good to go. Well, that, that really caused a big delay, in, especially around holiday times. Sure. And they said, can you solve that problem? And I said, that's really basically very simple. I identified it. We have negative account numbers. Put those into some kind of memory system. And at that time, there was no internet or PCs. And then give the merchant a little keypad to query the memory system. And if your number wasn't in there, you were good to go. So that was really the first point of sale device. Wow. And right around that time, I said, you know, maybe let's put some smarts into that little piece of plastic. And just at that time, reel to reel tape recorders came out. And I'm, I'm just thinking about that and I'm, I'm learning something new every day. And I said, well, I know what that is. It's tape with music or words stored on it and two motors to control the speed and a little read head. And I said, well, why don't I take a little piece of that tape, paste it on the back of the credit card, and then build a little device that mimics a tape recorder, and guess what? And make you the motor. Swipe it through. Push it in slow. Pull it out fast. And all it is is a little tape recorder that records what's on that tape and reads it on the little mimicking device. So that was the invention of the magnetic strip on the tape recorder. Wow. Was that your very first invention? Uh, no, there were, I grew up uh, with a very ordinary family during the, during the depression. My dad was a postal worker. My mom was a sales clerk. And of course, during the depression, we had no money and I had no money for toys. So I started inventing things at that time with, uh, masking tape and, and cardboard that came out of the shirt cleaning uh, boxes. And I was starting to build all my own little toys. So that was my First, really try of being innovative and coming up with something to uh, build my own toys. Right. Wow. But my wow. first invention was um, 
I had built, uh, I was working for a big company early in my career after I came back from the service and I had developed a, a special system for one of the biggest electric companies in, in Philadelphia. Okay. That was my first idea in, con in conception. Okay. And, and uh, you come from a family of inventors. I think your great grand or your grandfather my grandfather was credited with inventing what? Yeah, he was my he was truly my mentor. Um, he invented the first steam propulsion ship, the mechanism to propel propel freighters and steamships, and then he invented a torpedo detector during the First World War for submarines. And he was a diamond cutter, and he invented the first pressing machine for tailors, and then even the rabbit ears, which was the antenna for the first TVs. So he was quite a man. Wow. So you, you come from a classic underachieving family. <laughs> well, it was just my grandfather. He was my mentor. He even taught me how to sew. He was great on a sewing machine. Oh, wow. Wow. I can't imagine having that kind of uh, mentor and, and uh, hero. I mean, I, I would imagine, I know how young kids look up to their dad and say, wow, he's my hero. But to have somebody that invents something, I mean, they, as a kid, that it's every, every kid's dream to invent something. You know, it was interesting. That's how my brand name of the Grandfather of Possibilities came, came about. I was invited to have dinner with somebody who had found out all about the inventions I came up with. And this was a great speaker who invited me to New Orleans to dinner to learn all about me. He had his wife there and they were asking me what kind of background I had. And I had mentioned my grandfather and his wife said, well, geez, you're, you're almost like your grandfather with all those possibilities. You're, you're like, and she said, oops, what a great name. And I said, <laughs> wow, what a name for a book and a title, the grandfather of possibilities. And I've had that for many years now. Great. And you do have a book by the name of Grandfather Possibilities, which I've read, and it yes. kind of tells your story. It tells a lot of the processes that you've used. Uh, I encourage our listeners to go out and uh, find that. Where can they find the book? The book is on Amazon. It's also on my website, which I'll give a little later. Sure. And uh, it can be ordered at Barnes & Noble. So it's, it's available. If they order it directly from me, through my email, uh, I'll actually personally sign it and send it off to them. Okay. Well, there you go. Make sure that uh, you go to his website. We'll give that website later on in the show. Have your pen and paper ready and be sure to get that book. Uh, I highly recommend it. So you, um, you also know a little bit about real estate. Uh, tell me about your contribution to the real estate world, because I'm sure there's a lot of real estate agents listening. There's a lot of home, home buyers, uh, that are listening to the show and you contributed to that industry as well. Well, in, in 1966, I did the credit card and I felt so good about myself having a technical background and, and a mathematical background. And I was an entrepreneur because I knew how to communicate with the outside world. I started my own company. And at that time, um, I had lots of clients that started coming to me to solve their problems and turning them into challenges. And in 1967, uh, the National Board of Realtors came to me and presented the, uh, the multiple listing problem to me. And I developed multiple listing for real estate. And that was in 67, along with all of the special tools and, and instruments to carry it into what it is today. And then after that, I developed the formula to grow chickens in, a, in an earlier period of time in a... Uh, in a, a shorter period of time to full maturity and healthier chickens and sold that off to a, a big chicken manufacturer. Okay. And uh, then I developed a voice response for the banking industry so that when you would key in information from your phone, you would get synthesized voice back. And that led me into probably one of my major efforts in that I spent 25 years at the New York Stock Exchange automating the exchange and then developed the first bond quotation and trade system for members of the exchange. So that was just a few things that I did. Wow. I can already tell that uh, one interview is not going to be enough. So <laughs> I'm going to have to invite you back for the, for a second and maybe even third interview. So the MLS, uh, you're, you're the mastermind behind that principle. So uh, I think it's so cool that we have, you know, I know there's a lot of realtors in Sarasota and real estate is a huge industry in, in our city. And it's so cool to have the, the grandfather of the MLS living in Sarasota. Uh, and then the, the chicken uh, 
the the formula to grow chickens at a rapid rate uh you know you 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 are responsible for feeding a lot of families in america well healthier chickens healthier too. chickens exactly and they, they grew them to full maturity in 8 weeks right yeah yeah that's really uh that's really amazing so um, let me ask you this question, then I want to go back, and when we come back, I want to ask you some other questions. But right now, do you have any other inventions that you're working on right now? Yes. In, in fact, Dave, um, I'm constantly looking to, to give back. I might mention that uh, my biggest failure was I failed at retirement three times. <laughs> <laughs> I sold my first public company when I was age 34, and I, and I had 125 employees, and I figured, wow, what a great age to retire. That lasted about three months, and I went right back to work again. <laughs> <laughs> Worked until I was well up into my 60s and uh, thought I wanted to retire again, and that didn't work. So I finally went back and said, you know, and you have to really live life to the fullest and make sure you keep going until you're empty. And I'm not empty yet. And in July, I'll be 80 years old. Uh, so I'm still going. And I came up with, I met a, a gentleman of mine, a very close friend who was uh, totally visually impaired. He was blinded at age 13. And I was having breakfast with him one day and he said, you know, Ron, what I would love to have on my wish list is something that wouldn't be affected by any outside functions or outside world. Something would be inexpensive that I can identify everything I come in life with each day, my prescription medications, my spices and, and everything to, like that. And um, I came up with this great idea and I'm in the process right now of releasing it in the very near future. And I think probably what I'd like to tell you about is briefly when we come back from our break, of how it works. Absolutely. So I'm talking with Ron Klein from the Grandfather of Possibilities, inventor of the credit card strip and much more. When we come back, I'm going to ask Ron about the three things that an entrepreneur or biz owner must have to move forward and stand out. It's just a goodbye. Teach your children well. Don't have a radio nearby? Listen online at WSRQRadio.com. WSRQ, the voice of Sarasota, Manatee. I'm 10 News Meteorologist Ashley Beatty with your Suncoast weather forecast on WSRQ. Expect a lot of sunshine today. Temperatures will climb. We'll be in the low to mid 80s once again this afternoon. Staying dry today as well as tomorrow. Overnight lows tonight dropping down into the 60s once again. That humidity will start to creep up tomorrow. We'll see more cloud cover, but we're holding off on the rain chances until we head into Monday. That could linger into Tuesday morning. That's your 10 News weather on WSRQ, the voice of Sarasota Manatee. How do you define clean? At Gotta Maid, our mission is to provide you with the most amazing cleaning experience ever, or it's free. After an initial interview, a licensed, bonded, and insured technician will be trained to meet your definition of clean. The same person will arrive on time, every time. To arrange an interview, give us a call at 400-3711 or on the web at gottamadeclean.com. Gotta Maid, the most amazing cleaning experience ever, or it's free. Oslo Repertory Theater presents The Matchmaker, Thornton Wilder's madcap romantic comedy. Professional matchmaker Dolly Levi plots to find the perfect match for the lovelorn. But under her guidance, a swirl of clerks, hat makers, snooty waiters, and more become delightfully entangled in turn-of-the-century New York. Will they find true love? Join Oslo Rep to find out whether sometimes money really can buy happiness. Tickets at OsloRep.org. Hi, this is Theo Etzel with Conditioned Air. From the friendly voices that answer the phone to the certified technicians who respond to your call, count on Conditioned Air to provide the solutions to your air conditioning needs. Visit ConditionedAir.com to learn about our customer-centered philosophy or just call 1-888-COLD-AIR for Conditioned Air, a comfort people since 1960. 
Minnesota was nominated one of the top 10 small towns in the world for luxury homes. Murray Homes' superior craftsmanship, unique architectural styles and attention to every detail just may be the reason for Sarasota's international recognition. When imagining the Florida lifestyle of your dreams, let the talented professionals of Murray Homes create it for you. For a personal consultation, call 906-7000 or visit us online at murrayhomesinc.com. The West Florida Chapter of Community Association Institute, better known as CAI, provides certification and education for community association managers, board members, and homeowners. At CAI, we believe that well-educated, inspired, effective leaders build better communities. To learn how your community can get involved with CAI in a meaningful way, give us a call at 941-927-1910 or on the web at caiwestflorida.org. Hi, I have to tell you some really good news. My good friend Larry Cullen wants each of you to know that Sleep King of Sarasota is ready to help you get that good night's sleep. Wonderful mattresses from Stearns & Foster to Sealy & Simmons because you deserve the best. So stop by and see Larry Cullen at 1901 Hanson Street. Take it, Larry. Buy a mattress today, sleep on it tonight. Free same-day delivery, even if I have to carry it on my back. Only at Sleep King in Sarasota. If you have an appetite for Sarasota and are looking for the inside track to all the great places to eat, tune into the Nylon Report every Thursday at 4.30 and catch the Sarasota Foodies on WSRQ. You're listening to WSRQ, the voice of Sarasota. Welcome back to Empowering Small Business. I'm Dave Kaufman, and I'm talking with Ron Klein, the grandfather of possibilities. And uh, before we uh, uh, left you on the last break, I told you that I was going to ask him about three things that an entrepreneur or business owner must have to move forward and to stand out. Ron, what's your philosophy? My philosophy on that, Dave, is you have to be smart, daring, and different. I'll smart, say that again. Smart, daring, and different. And people say, Ron, what do you mean by that? Well, smart, listen. In other words, don't just hear, listen, learn something new every day, independent of how important you may think it is, learn something new every day. That's smart. Daring, don't be afraid to take chances. Don't be afraid to fail. The other word for failure is called education. We right. learn so much from failure. I love if we that. don't fail, you're not going to win because nobody, only Einstein, well, I think even Einstein failed at the time. And different absolutely be different because everything you do has to provide benefit. We don't sell ideas, we sell benefits. So keep that in mind. You have to be smart, daring, and different. And that, that's what success is. I love what you said about uh, failing. Um, I've, I've heard this before, that if you want to increase your success, increase your uh, failure rate. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of the... Uh, minds that I've been fortunate enough to educate myself under and to uh, just kind of be a sponge like John Maxwell, Michael Gerber, Darren Hardy, they've all said the very same thing. He says, uh, you know, they're one of the biggest failures in the room. Richard Branson is one of the biggest failures that they know of. I mean, he's tried all kinds of things and it's kind of like a, a pendulum uh, that swings over into the failure side, but it, it has to come back into the win side. Absolutely. And so if you want to increase your success, you're telling us to go out and try new things, not go out and look for failure, but don't be scared to try new things. Exactly. And, and I have always worst cased everything. Okay. I, I look at everything as a challenge and that it's a big room with a front door and if I'm going to enter into this challenge or enter into this new venture, I open up the front door, I look around, and before I close that door behind me, I look to see if there's a back door. If there's a back door, I feel very comfortable. I close the front door behind me and say, if I fail or if there's something that goes wrong, my exit strategy is go out the back door. Right. Okay. So you can't lose. Smart, daring, and different. I think that's uh, great, timely advice for small business owners here in Sarasota today. So thank you for that. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about, uh, on the last segment, you were talking about your latest invent invention. Can you go ahead and kind of explain what that does and what how it works? 
what I came up with was something to, uh, to help the visually impaired, both the blind and those that are visually impaired through macular degeneration and others. And it's a simple device that it's a free app that goes into your smartphone, doesn't require a connection to the internet. The phone itself is the device that can support it. And it uses little QR coded labels but they're very unique. And the QR coded label, probably lots of people have seen it. looks like a little postage stamp with a lot of black scribbling lines on it. And that has different kinds of sensitivity and can store different kinds of messages. I use it in a very unique way so that the device and, and what we're providing is a device, a little package of a hundred of them that are adhesive and the blind person can paste it on anything they want, describe what it is. And then anytime they point their phone at it, it tells them what it is and takes them right to the device. A perfect example is a, a blind person goes to a pharmacy to pick up his prescription medicine. The pharmacist will take one of these labels from the blind person, put it on the lid and speak into the blind person's phone, explaining what the device is. Now, when the blind person puts that in their medicine chest, points their phone at it, he takes the proper medicine and not the aspirins instead. So, uh, it's a very, very handy device that has unlimited applications, but is not affected by the outside world. Wow. And it's so inexpensive. All they, all they have to do, it's not even an investment. The oh, app is free and the little labels that come in a package of a hundred are less than $20. So there's an application that every blind person or visually impaired person all over the world can identify the things they come in contact with every day for a very, very small investment and they can be in control of what they put those stickers on as well too right exactly you know? and what they'll do is they'll take a sticker paste it on something put their finger over where they're pasting it and then take their phone and put it on top of their finger and slowly move the phone away and the camera and the phone will speak what it, what that device is on the label wow and very very simple wow you know, I think it's interesting, um, and I'm not sure quite how to say this. I don't want to uh, point out your age, but most people that your age really don't understand technology. So what what intrigued you at, at, a, at what age did technology really, like, grab you um, and, 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 you know? It grabbed me when I was a young boy, and actually, I always wanted engineering and mathematics and science, and I didn't, and I wasn't able to afford going to college uh, in my growing up years. And fortunately, or unfortunately, I say fortunately, I was drafted during the Korean War at age eighteen, went into the service, and when I came out, I had the GI Bill, and I was able to uh, complete my degree in engineering and mathematics. And then discovered I was really an entrepreneur and I understood how to communicate with the outside world and clients. So I was the liaison between the technical world, the outside world, and that's how, that was what really intrigued me. Right. In the early days, I was actually a commercial artist. That's what I studied in school, uh, graphic design, and that helped me quite a bit in my development. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's that's a detail that I didn't know about you that you had. I'm sure there's a lot of details that I don't know about you. I, I learned from you every time that we're together. Um, tell us about the bond system at the New York Stock Exchange. What, what was that about? That was interesting. Along with automating all of the things in developing program trading, in 1983, I noticed that, well, the New York Stock Exchange traded both equities, stocks, and fixed income, which was bonds corporate listed bonds. And in the corporate listed bond market, it was a, an auction market where the traders would stand on the floor, throwing up their hands back and forth, bidding on bonds. However, the, the equity market, the stock market was automated. They had Bloomberg terminals and so on. And I looked at that and I said, well, geez, I can automate that. And the New York stock exchange said, well, it's been like this for 205 years. They're not going to accept it. And I said, will you give me an exclusive license if I can automate it? And I came up with a simple idea. I'll, I'll speak fast on this one. Sure. Came up with a simple idea just to build a little box. It was a filter box. Put it online, run the lines to every brokerage office uh, throughout Wall Street and give them a little terminal and they could trade bonds. So I automated that. The New York Stock Exchange gave me a license. And the end result was I removed it from the bond trading floor and put it at every broker's desk all throughout Wall Street. 
And that was a, a simple little task. I just built a little filter box. The interesting thing was is how I cashed in on that and turned that into a uh, quite a source over the next quarter of a century providing transparency in the bond market. Can you tell us about that? Real quick. Okay. What I did was um, I gave them a filter box and a, a, ver a terminal, a video terminal, and ran the main line from the New York Stock Exchange into every office. And then the filter box would just take out only the information that they needed. And um, I had to come up with how to charge for this. And I said, um, how should I charge for it? And they said, well, we don't buy anything. We rent everything. And the box cost me $100 to build. And I thought very quickly and I said, $300 to rent. And they said, that's wonderful. We can make that in an hour. <laughs> and then also I said, well, these were the fat times on Wall Street. I said, well, you have to first join my club and everybody must pay me $10,000 for every trader just to join my club and be able to trade bonds at your desk. And they said, oh, we can make that in a week. Unfortunately, the whole thing only lasted a quarter of a century. <laughs> okay, do the math, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love the idea that so far, what I've heard from you, your inventions are not like these uh, big, costly things. That it, it's, it's taking what you already knew and applying them to the challenge. So I, I'm sure there's a business lesson there for small business owners. The business lesson, Dave, is I don't classify any of them as inventions. They're innovations. Every one of them is bettering something that doesn't exist or bettering something that does exist. And you never sell an idea, you sell a benefit. So innovations provide benefits, and that's the answer to intellectual property. And the interesting thing about intellectual properties, most people think, well, intellectual property means you have to go out and get a patent. Not true. The definition in my mind of intellectual property is it has to be proprietary. Mm -hmm. It means it's yours. Right. It has to have value, something you can you can uh, actually uh, monetize, and it has to have a benefit. It must provide a benefit. Therefore, it's a brand. So let's a perfect example is Coca-Cola. They never patent their formula because that would become public information. Right. That's their secret sauce. If you have a secret sauce to make the best spaghetti in the world, fine. As long as it's in a, intellectual property, it doesn't have to be patented. It's your secret to success. And you are an expert in patent law, patent design, and all of that? I've been practicing that for a long, long time because I have so many provisional patents I've put together for people, for myself, and of course I have my own patents. So I understand intellectual property very, very well. I'm talking with Ron Klein from The Grandfather of Possibilities. And as you can tell, uh, possibilities are endless with this man. When we come back, I'll ask him about what he does in his spare time. Don't go anywhere. Tune in to Parenting on Purpose with Jenny and Jody on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. on WSRQ. Let's talk about raising leaders and parenting with the end result in mind. The game energizes you. How could it not? The speed, the precision, the power. But the excitement, the energy that electrifies the ice, the passion that connects a team and a town, that comes from you. The Tampa Bay Lightning. Be the Thunder. Be the Thunder this Monday. Lightning versus Canadians, 7.30 p.m. Tickets at tampabaylightning.com. For over 55 years, the Jewish Federation of Sarasota Manatee has dedicated itself to breaking down barriers and bringing our community together. We do this in our support of the arts, education, and philanthropy. We believe in the strength of people and the power of community. We strive to live these principles daily in our events, programs, and activities. For more information and to learn how you can get involved, visit us online at thejewishfederation.org. Trivia they know 
You need to fill your reading time with stuff you can really use. You gotta get something fun to read. Read it in the copy news. Read it in the copy news. Read it in the copy news. Here's a message from the Detoli Cancer Center in Sarasota. If you've been treated in the past for prostate cancer and the cancer has returned, only for your doctor to tell you there's nothing that they can do, you're talking to the wrong doctor. Dr. Michael Detoli and Dr. Richard Serace and their staff at the Detoli Cancer Center in Sarasota have been treating prostate cancer successfully for over 25 years. Check out our website at detoli.com. You'll find a lot of information and why we are pioneers in new innovative treatments, especially for recurrent prostate cancer. You'll read about our experience and why we've been able to post the longest published cure rates in the world. Log on to detoli.com or call us at 1-877-DETOLI. That's 1-877-328-8654 for more information. We'll be glad to discuss the various treatment options that have proven successful for thousands of men all over the world. Reputation, experience, and successful treatments. That is what has made the Detoli Cancer Center a world leader in the treatment of prostate cancer. Call us and talk to the right doctor. Igor, he's alive! Quick, Igor, unstrap him! Let the world see! No, 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 wait, wait, wait. I need to call my Brown and Brown insurance advisor and make sure I'm covered first. Having insufficient insurance coverage can be a monster of a mistake. A Brown and Brown insurance advisor makes sure you have the right coverage at the right price. A Brown and Brown insurance advisor makes all the difference. Call 941-893-2200 for a free review of your insurance needs. Bravo! Unstrap him, Igor! Your station for local news, sports, traffic, weather, and information. 106.9 at 1220 AM. WSRQ. Welcome back to Empowering Small Business. I'm Dave Kaufman. Listeners, thank you so much for spending your Saturday morning with me. I have Ron Klein in the studio. His company name is Grandfather of Possibilities. And uh, before the break, I told you I was going to ask him about what he does in his spare time. And I can tell you this, it's not relaxing. Ron, what do you do in your spare time? Well, first of all, I have great difficulty, Dave, separating work from play. <laughs> <laughs> True entrepreneur. Right. There, there is no difference. And in my spare time, I do a lot of bicycling and okay. I do sailing. And the bicycling came about through um, a serious impediment I have in my spine. And uh, now I end up riding 30 miles a day for the last 23 years every day. And it's part of my therapy. And it ends up being my enjoyment. Um, I had a serious injury when I was in the service and then further complications when I came out. It's inoperable. I have a, a spine condition. I can't stand too long, can't walk too far, have constant pain, but it makes me smile because that's what I've done. I've trained my brain to handle the pain. Nobody wants to hear about it. Everybody has a lot worse problems than I have. It's not life-threatening. So I figured I would turn it into an opportunity. It's a challenge. Yeah. And because it's inoperable, I have no discs in the lumbar of my spine and uh, the doctors won't touch me. And if they attempted to put spacers in and I've gone through all kinds of therapy and machines, they said it would be too risky because I wouldn't be able to be active and so on and so forth. And I said, well, Ron, you can fix that. You can fix anything. You fix your own problem. <laughs> so I said, well, my, that's bone on bone. All I have to do is separate the bones. And if I do that, it stops pinching the nerves. And I said, let me try riding a bicycle, a racing bicycle, where you bend over and move your legs and everything. Well, I tried that. And for some reason in my system, it opened up the facet joints in my spine. And after I ride for about five minutes, I am totally pain-free. I started riding every day. And I became so proficient at it. Somebody said, Ron, you should try triathlons. And I said, what's a triathlon? <laughs> and they said, well, you know, you swim, you bike, you run. I said, well, I can't run because of my back. Swimming, not too good, but I, I'm hell on the bike. And they said, well, you know, you can join like a team. And there's triathlons here in Sarasota. They're wonderful. I started riding in the triathlons as a team member, and I was smoking them on the bike because I was becoming so proficient. We were winning bronze. We were winning silver. We finally won gold. And I did so well that, Somebody said, well, you're doing so good in the triathlons. Why don't you go out for the Senior Olympics? Again, I said, what's the Senior Olympics? <laughs> they said, well, you do time trials. Great. Okay. And every county has this. Start winning 
bronze, silver, and in 2003, I won gold, and I was the Athlete of the Year in Sarasota County for the Senior Olympics. And do you mind telling us at what age that is? Well, I was a lot younger then. Right now, I'm, I'm still a youngster. I'm just going on 80 years old. Unbelievable. You know, it, let me ask you a question. Um, is there, is, do you have limits in your mind? Do you place limits on yourself? There are no such thing as limits. Yeah. What are limits? What are limits? <laughs> I don't even know how to spell yeah, it. Yeah. And I, I think that uh, we, we were created with such a powerful possibility. I mean, you, you had mentioned something earlier about you want to leave life empty. And my philosophy is that when we were born, we have this table full of everything that we need in life to be successful. Everything, including our parents, our, you know, everything in life that we have. So my objective in life is to die with my table empty, leave nothing on the table. Well, you know, it's interesting. I have a very dear friend, the speaker, Les Brown, and he says, Ron, live, vice, live a life to the fullest and make sure when you die, you die empty. And I feel that my job on earth is three things. Spread cheer, okay, give back, and develop. And that's my job yeah. and, and make sure I don't go before I'm empty. So I've got a big job to do. Yeah. A sense of urgency. Urgency. Right. And I think that's a, a true character of a, of a entrepreneur, a business owner It's kind of a sense of urgency that they have to, they have to accomplish something. And once they accomplish, they realize that there's so much more to accomplish. And so the encouragement that I get from you is the, the possibilities are endless. They're the sky endless. is the, is the limit. And after the sky, there's space. You know, I, you know? I love to teach. I, I think, you know, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not an inspirational speaker, but I, I spread both, but I love to teach. And, and what I preach to people is what Einstein said years ago. If you can't explain it, in one sentence or less, then you really don't understand it yourself. So right. when I ask people, what do they do or what does, what's their challenge? They go on and on and on and try and get me to understand. And I stand back and I just paraphrase it and say, is this what you feel that is the true challenge? And is this the, the situation that you're involved with? And they said, yeah, you got it. Yeah. And that's what I, ex that's the expertise I like to present where simplify to the point where people can understand can communicate between each other and learn. And that is so true, Ron, because, you know, I've been fortunate to have you advise me on a product that I'm developing. It's called the Edge Peer Advisory Group. And, and that philosophy that you just explained is part of the Edge. And what Edge is, it, it, it's a small business uh, mastermind for business owners that help solve challenges. And so you have really spoken into my life and my business and my products that very philosophy so I, I thank you for that so um do you have do you have mentors and if so what do they do for you my mentor again was th my grandfather many many years ago who really helped me understand what life was all about and my mentors today is just about everyone it's all of the people i learned from i learned something new from everyone every day. I don't just hear, I listen. Right. That's critical. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So Ron, how can our listeners get in touch with you? Okay. They can certainly call me on my cell phone. It's always available and it's always open. It's 941-374-5739. And if they want to contact me, they can email me at ronkline at the number four ronkline.com. And I also have another email address goes to the same place. It's ronkline at the grandfather of possibilities.com, which brings my website. I go. have the two ways to get to my website. It's www.thegrandfatherofpossibilities.com or www, the number four, ronkline.com. And I would love to speak to your audience. Absolutely. And uh, actually, in on May the 22nd, you will be speaking at my half-day workshop. So we look forward to that. And we'll definitely uh, have you on before that as well. Um, I want to tell you about this month's event. Every month, Empowering Small Business holds a 
uh, half day workshop for small business owners. And this month is this coming Friday, March 27th. It's called the Mastering the Art of Networking. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to my website, empoweringsmallbiz.com and find the event tab and go to Mastering the Art of Networking. And for my listeners, I'm going to give you a discount code. The code is YES20, YES20, all caps. So once you find the event and uh, click on register now and put in the code YES20. Ron Klein, thank you so much for joining us today. And to the listeners, thank you for tuning in. I want to thank my sponsors, Gotta Made and Dynamic Motor Car Center for making this show possible. And please join me next Saturday right here on the Empowering Small Business Show. I'm Dave Kaufman saying that you can have everything in life that you want if you will just help others get what they want in life. Cheers.